Uh, so welcome to today's webinar, uh, Between Us, Cargo Chief, and Logistically TMS. Uh, today we'll be going over our more so complete integration, including the most recent release, um, bringing digital freight matching straight from C4 straight to Logistically customers. Uh, talking about the integration and getting into the workflow a little bit later, I've got Matt Wright, who handles all things sales and uh, customer success related. Uh, and myself, Chris Arredondo, co-founder and VP of pretty much everything customer related here at Cargo Chief. So we, we similar roles, I would say. Yeah, um, customer, customer guys. Yeah, you know. That's right. As a quick agenda, first, we're going to talk about uh, why digital freight matching was added to logistically and then what you can expect as a customer uh, from our partnership. We'll also cover a little bit more um, about our procurement and automation software called C4, what it is um, and how it's different from some of the other solutions out there. Uh, before we hop into a live demo there at the at the end with logistically, I'd like to share some overall results uh, near the end from one of our other customers and looking at kind of what you can expect uh, and gain from our take on booking freight and the integration as a whole. So I'm going to talk about kind of uh, this third leg, I'd say, of our partnership. Matt, we've been probably partnered for like two years. I, I don't know. Yeah. It feels like forever. So yeah. for first, it was kind of that that capacity uh, piece and then the pricing engine together working in tandem and now kind of rounding it together with our freight matching solution. Uh, can you take us kind of through what you were hearing on your end, uh, what your customers and prospects were ask, asking for and just kind of how this third leg digital freight matching came together? Yeah, well, like you mentioned, I mean, we're, we've been integrated for a couple of years. So we've got, you know, a, a good portion of users that are kind of using both tools now and uh, implementing Cargo Chief alongside logistically. And I think a lot of them as you guys start to roll out new products um, and start to enhance your offerings, a lot of them get wind of those types of things and want to start to implement that into the solution, right? I mean, um, they, as a TMS, we just want to have an you know, easy to use tool, something that's simple and easy to access and easy to get through, but also something that's integrated. So, um, you know, th this sort of digital freight match um, step is a, is a logical step for us, right? It's, it's going to help automate the process for a lot of users and um, take some of the the manual keystrokes and processes out of the out of the process there. Um, and like I said, we already had the building blocks in place. We already have a lot of customers that are sort of asking for this because it's let's just take it a step further, right? Let's yeah. not just see the data, let's not just see the carriers, but let's see how we can take action with that and um, hopefully become more efficient. So, um, kind of a no brainer for us, you know. Um, yeah. And of course, the team at Cargo Chief, you guys are awesome. <laughs> Uh, we, it's, it's, it's seriously, it makes a big difference. I think working with people that you've, uh, you, that you jive with, you know, um, it yeah. makes a big difference on your, you know, your ability to get stuff done. So. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think a lot of TMS is, you know, they're, they're really good data warehouses, but it, it's like you guys have a way now to, to kind of really help automate the task. Right. And not necessarily the job, but you know, adding more efficiency. And I, I always talk about cost per load and that's like, one of the main drivers of, of of a brokerage CFO that they should be looking at to understand what what they should be doing next, and right. really like it comes down to like two things: it's either more volume to drive your cost per load down, or being more efficient. Right, and it's it's a good thing that you know you, you guys and your customers can now kind of take take that in into their own operation and start to automate some of those mundane tasks. I, I would right. say. Yeah, a lot of the customers we work with, they have people that are, you know, they're the entire jobs, right? Where someone's just sort of manually reaching out to carriers, getting things covered, things like that. It's a great way to create efficiency with tools like this. Right. So a little bit more about Cargo Chief. Uh, we're a software company, simply put, meant to help you book free. Um, and how we do that is through our procurement and automation software called C4. Uh, so we kind of layer that with our capacity and pricing engine. Uh, we make booking freight way less stressful, I'd say, with our matching automation that really expedites that option process and takes care of that carrier attention. So you can get back to spending time on what, what's necessary rather than spending hours emailing or calling carriers. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit more about what makes C4 unique when it comes to capacity and transforming the way you source coverage. A good way to think about C4 is sometimes relating it to a platform similar to like Zoom Info or other lead generating software. Uh, with C4, you're going to see a much tighter carrier pipeline to drive the right fit for your load at the right price, overall giving you more capacity and often reaching three times the number of carriers than it would be using only your internal network. And the reason why it works is because the way we aggregate lane information on carriers. For example, here on the right, you've got carrier X. 
uh, that hauled Houston to Atlanta for you last week, let's call it. You may not know where else they go, maybe just due to the fact that you didn't have any other freight for them, or maybe you, you didn't have the time to procure or build a profile for them. With C4 having around uh, 150 brokerages network-wide, the chances are high that that same carrier has hauled not just Houston to Atlanta, uh, but maybe Atlanta to Charlotte, uh, maybe to Chicago or Columbus to Chicago or Houston to anywhere else. Uh, and it really allows you to go beyond just the network that you've got uh, since we have kind of a, a more kind of comprehensive network. That gives you the leverage to instantly expand that lane coverage and triple your options without having to do anything. Kind of also allows you to automate that carry attention like I was talking about earlier, as well as pre-book more freight by us matching your carriers on every lane, every, sorry, every new lane a carrier runs from loads that hit the C4 network rather than just your own. So now also in logistically, this was kind of our second integration there. You also have access to C4's pricing engine that really gives that true prediction of the current market for, I'd call it spot on accuracy when you're booking freight. Um, and today we're processing around uh, more or less 60,000 loads a week, uh, give, giving the ability to, to process more current data as loads are booked rather than delivered like a lot of the other tools. Uh, it also allows C4 to react to the market before loads have even been picked up because we're constantly processing loads in C4. Probably already now, since I've been talking, probably already processed 100 loads or so. I don't even know, but it, it just keeps going. Now on the coverage side, your other rating tool is talking about rating here, maybe telling you that you'll be paying a carrier around, let's call it two grand, but if the market has already swung in the other direction, you'd easily find yourself overpaying if you haven't kept tabs on where the market has gone and where it's been. A lot of people don't really look at a rate again until they get that load. And, and a lot of times it's a two week gap between the two. And a lot of the other rating tools out there, it's it's hard to, to accurately know what you're gonna be paying if you're using an average or something that seven days or 14 days is delayed. Um, so with this integration, you'll have that market rating control, um, specifically if you want to override your target rate. I'm not sure exactly what it's called there in logistically, uh, but Matt, Matt will show us. Uh, with C4's rate, if the market happens to be lower than what you're originally going to offer, giving you more room for that, that overall margin and all automated too. Uh, so our pricing engine allows you to take that rating to the next level without the legwork of manually entering rates when markets change. So I'm going to talk uh, a little bit more about digital freight matching um, and understand what it is for those that might that this might be a new term for. I think as the industry continues to evolve, uh, this term will change likely and, and continue to transform how that digital match is used and what comes thereafter. Uh, so today we here at Cargo Chief see it more, more through the lens of procurement, uh, but at the same time delivering that, that rapid capacity without all the legwork and the right fit for a load at the right price. And kind of different from load boards, our, our DFM solution is more geared to driving in those high quality options and really focusing on digital carry engagement. At the same time, having more control over who sees your freight. Uh, we, we put a lot of emphasis on, on that carrier attention side and email deliver, deliverability while you're still expanding your carrier network. So for us, DFM doesn't just stop with that quality carrier selection, but it goes beyond that in the freight matching part by also including uh, our current rates uh, to the pricing engine, giving you a better offer. So I want to walk through kind of how this how this all works, I guess. Uh, so ultimately, the main reason why customers lean into Cargo Chief, buy into C4, is to really drive, again, that digital care engagement, increase their options, um, and book book more freight quicker. Uh, so let's kind of look at where it starts at here in Logistically. As soon as your load is built um, right there in Logistically, your load's immediately sent out to Cargo Chief, and the option process starts. Uh, at that point, and during the onboarding side, we'll set certain criteria and conditions based on uh, specific customer freight or even set time-based delays if you wanted uh, C4 to start matching at a certain time interval rather than every single load that goes out and put on the board. Um, next, we'll also pair that with our capacity engine and our market rates to drive that care engagement to help you move freight out of profit. Because again, when it comes to cost per load, profitability is is sometimes over missed. It's not every, even though you make 200 bucks on a load doesn't mean you're profitable. It's really important to know that cost per load. And, and here after the webinar, anyone who wants to know how to calculate that, happy to chat and, and kind of give you a little bit of guidance on how to calculate that. 
So at this point, carriers can engage uh, directly with you through your inbox, uh, or they can also click a button uh, to log right straight there into Logistically. And I, I want to say it's like the bid screen or something that Matt will be showing. Uh, so our DFM solution, it, it what it's going to do is pull in more options than that traditional sourcing or other matching platforms. It may require a little bit more conversation on the front end with carriers, uh, since we focus more on, again, driving in engagement. I mean, prioritizing your next decision, uh, but at the same time, giving you control over who takes your freight, because let's face it, if you're posting something out in the public, you don't really know who's looking at that. And I think the load board carrier today is different than the load board carrier when I was booking freight back in I don't know, 2014, 2015, where now it's it's like when a carrier calls in, they've probably got 20 other identical loads that they're looking at whenever they're talking to you. So it's kind of a lot of times brokers are really just inflating the market themselves without control. And, and it's it's a good idea to really start thinking about that. So looking at one of our customers, um, HTS Logistics, they're a tightly integrated customer within the, within the first 30 days. They started seeing not just an increase in that digital care engagement, but also a reduction in the cost of booking a load. Uh, their coverage grew without any resources, spending time building out profiles because C4 does it for them. At the same time, they booked more loads because they had uh, kind of the coverage to take on more freight from the customers and could shoulder the new risk by knowing they had absolute coverage and a stronger market share. Uh, when it came down to, let's call it quality, uh, of the options that were coming in, they saw a huge jump uh, than that of their previous ways of sourcing that leads that led, I guess, directly to revenue and load growth. Uh, if you like to read the full case study, Happy to share that with you. You can go to uh, cargochief.com, our website, and check that out. I think there's even a cool video there. And feel free to look at our other case studies. So at this point, we made it, Matt. Uh, <laughs> made it to a live demo. So I'm going to pass it back over to you. I'm going to try at least. Uh, let's yeah, see. I might. I think I can grab it from you. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, I just lost you. Hold on. There we go. I'll start sharing my screen. So for everyone watching, this will be pretty quick. I think that's kind of the beauty of this integration, as Chris has alluded to, is uh, making things more efficient for everyone, right? So we're for us, we're, we're trying to require as few touch points as possible, um, you know, and, and while kind of looping in this integration to, to, to fill those gaps, right? So people aren't, aren't having to click through so many screens and um, go through so many things manually. So um, first step really is obviously connecting to Cargo Chief. Um, for us, it's just a profile level setting, uh, just like it would be on the Cargo Chief uh, side of things. So you just turn on a little toggle. Do we have Cargo Chief? Yes or no. Uh, and then when you're building your first load, uh, after you've done that, it'll prompt you to put in your credentials. So very simple uh, workflow there. Um, not, not a long-term sort of process to get those two things rolling. It's just based on your, your Cargo Chief credentials. Um, now, once you have those in there and we plugged in our credentials, now it's time to start using these integrations. Um, so, you know, as Chris alluded to, kind of the source of some of this information is going to be uh, logistically, and that's going to be the load level details. So you can see here, I've built a shipment going from Green Bay, Wisconsin to Park City, Illinois. Um, you know, we've right, obviously have kind of done that ahead of time to help reduce you guys uh, watch me go through the screen here. But um, this is where Cargo Chief really comes into play, right? And I think I will allude to a couple of these other integrations we have in place uh, on the Cargo oh, Chief oh, side oh. of things as well. Um, so you can see, right, there's that um, that market rate sort of tool alongside your historic rates. I think this is actually a really vital part of the logistically integration with Cargo Chief uh, as well as identifying when you do need to go find, you know, new carriers. Are there scenarios where I'm already covering a lane and I'm getting such great rates I shouldn't uh, go source? And, and just sort of knowing when uh, is the right time for some of that. Um, now, in addition to that, uh, there is the capacity tool, right? So identifying carriers that are actually out there uh, alongside your historic carriers. So there's that C4 product, right? Uh, built right into the screen for you. So we can start to identify carriers that might be out there on this lane. Uh, but the, the, the bulk of this, obviously, digital freight match uh, is driven by really not having a carrier, right? So I'll get through this screen. I'll build my shipments. Um, and unfortunately, I won't be able to assign a carrier to the load because I don't quite have the coverage yet. Um, so all a logistic user has to do is just save my order. When I go ahead and save my order, it's going to put us in a pending detail status, and then the integration runs. Uh, and that's really the beauty of it. There's no buttons to click, no 
you know, no screens to go through. That's it's meant to really be efficient for you guys. So this this DFM tool will go here behind the scenes and to, and to Chris's point is going to go in and, and sift through your network of carriers and help find you guys, um, you know, valid coverage options um, that are hopefully a higher quality than you already have access to. Um, and then, you know, maybe you're, you're filling lanes you might not have been filling before. Um, but all I do is click yes, and the integration runs. Uh, it stops running as soon as we have a carrier on it. Uh, and you can see right here, here's the layout of our load. We have a little bids tab. No results quite yet because we haven't sent out the bids quite yet. Uh, I will show you an example of what that looks like, though, on the other side. So um, we'll have our bids tab for every order. Once you start getting responses back from carriers through Cargo Chief, uh, you'll be able to see those right here. And you'll be able to see here from Cargo Chief right there in the upper right hand corner of your little uh, box. You'll see each carrier that has come back and the quote they've provided. Um, so to, to Chris's point, I think this is from a user perspective, everyone has a little bit of a different flavor here. Some people might like operating in the inbox for some of this stuff, just because it's what you're doing right now. And that's totally okay. Um, but the, the layout is here for you to ultimately accept the best bid. Um, and even to counter bid, I think that's a mechanism. A lot of people lean into in our system right now as well. If I click more on any one of these, you know, let's use a, maybe a service, uh, a quality of service sort of example. Maybe AAA Transport is one of my favorite carriers. There's, their service is awesome. The billing process is, is, is always seamless. Um, but their rate isn't quite as good as what I got from Bushman Trucking up here for 985. So I could go ahead, click more on AAA Transport, uh, send them a note and even counter bid on that uh, without having to leave the system. And again, the goal is just to have something that's integrated, one access point for the end user. Um, once I have the best rate, once I'm feeling comfortable, I just simply accept it. Um, this goes ahead and, and automates notification for all the carriers that, that aren't selected um, and notifies the carrier did select that uh, they're going to be on this. So, um, you know, confirmation email gets sent to the carrier from here. They get their email, they confirm it, you're good to go. So, um, but again, I think there's, a lot, there's not a lot to show and that's, the, that's kind of what we want, right? Um, I, I built a shipment, let's, let's let the integration do its work for us and uh, we'll read the benefits later. So, um, like I said, pretty quick to kind of get through this, but um, you know, that's, that's really our goal here is just as, as, as hands off as we possibly can be here trying to create some efficiency. It's really cool to see it kind of, I mean, like you said, there's nothing really to see, but it's, it's really nice to see that everything's here. Like it, it's yes. C4, it, you can access the application. There's a couple features here and there that, that aren't necessarily integrated, but still right. the main bulk of this is like, letting the integration do its thing. There's, we usually see like two types of users. There's those that are like, they want to use the application. They want to kind of find new carriers and procure them, call them and quote things out differently, run RFPs. But then there's also a thing called product adoption. And right. th this is what really helps streamline that process. Cause it's, it's, it's tough to get people to, to log into something. And that's the same with carriers too. Like, Right. Giving them another load board to go log into another two, three, four clicks. That's unnatural. Mm -hmm. That's not part of their workflow today. Like this whole thing just allows allows that stuff to to not change behavior. Your users can literally just build loads just as they do today and right. still get offers back, whether that's in right. logistically or if it's straight to their inbox. I, I think I these days, you know, the industry is like that phone call and conversation over anything. So majority there's probably going to be a lot in the inbox but it's still not to say that it doesn't translate to to this type of right. too because i i like that you can counter back and send them a message or something like hey i, I can't do can't do that or or can't can you pick up tomorrow yeah, yeah. for 900 or something yeah, drop it a couple hundred bucks i'll take it right now you know yeah. um you know, I think the other big thing we see too is, you know, well, we track a lot of analytics on some of this stuff too, from a logistically perspective. So, and I know you guys do do as well. So there's a lot of just great data for users, I think, on both the Carter Chief and the logistically side um, to start to really narrow down, you know, who's really responding to these, who's winning these types of bids, you know, who should I lock in on a little more, right? And uh, and try to work with a little more. So, um, you know, it's, it's obviously automation on the front end, but there's a really great way to start identifying trends long-term as well and make better, better business decisions going forward. Yeah. And our, you know, some of the things that we track is more like on the, we really focus on that deliverability and, and right. look at things more from like a marketing database, marketing perspective, like clearly identifying that persona, that carrier, what, what's going to be the best target for us to email that way they open the, open the email and actually engage with, with the user. Right. 
So it's like, I, I want to say our open rates are somewhere around 80%, which is wow, really, 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 really high. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. Any sort of like marketing campaigns is probably like 25% or something. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I may, maybe I've seen some like 50%. We When we used to like do some marketing just for sales and stuff, uh, we, we'd have some pretty high open rates, but never like 80%. 80% is is really different. And and at the end of the day, it is a sell, like you're selling or you're buying that truckload freight. And so you really have to think of it like, are my emails even getting opened? And when, when you look at 0% or 80 versus 80%, like think of the, the, the automated side is that nobody has to send an email that C4 does it for you. And we customize all your templates, put your logo, your name, the person, route everything back to the user. Uh, as far as replies, based on if you're in pods, then we'll send it to that pod. If it's a backhaul person, we'll send it to them. It's it's really customizable, and I, I like how the integration allows that. And the other thing is, like, it, it comes down to, like, helping you book loads. And I, I want to say, on average, <clears throat> our engagement rate uh, is somewhere around 30%. So if you're running, like, 2,000 loads a month, uh, 30% of that, I think, is, like, uh, oh, man. Now I'm challenging my math, huh? What what is that like? Two hundred? No, it's like 600, 700 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. As far as thirty percent goes, um, so that that's six hundred, seven hundred emails that you're going to be getting straight to your right. inbox. Where in the past it would have been goose egg. So <laughs> it's right. it's a really di different process. And then taking that further, on average, we're we're booking somewhere around eight percent. Um, so 8% of that two 2,000 loads is some, I think it's like 160 loads a month. So right. thinking about like, you know, your cost per load and what, what that cost is with a subscription versus paying somebody to do that. It's, it's really starts to compress that cost. So, so you can focus on the things that matter rather than e emailing carriers individually, calling them individually and, and not, not creating the, the most efficiency there. Right. So, you make and you make a really good point about, um, you know, booking more loads. I think a lot of people when they when they approach these types of tools, the the scope is, you know, or the lens is, I want to, I want to, I want to maybe more effectively address the loads I'm already booking or the the volume I already have. But there's there's volume with current customers in a lot of cases that you can get more access to just by being a little more reactive and having, um, you know, more responsive carrier base and automating more of those processes. Right, speed is sort of the name of the game. People lose loads all the time just for taking too long. So, yeah. um, you know, having that efficient process, right. It's going to, it's going to help you win more, win more bids. Even the, the option side. So it's like the, you know, if back to the example of the carrier capacity part, if, if a carrier like this lane, what was this Wisconsin to Illinois, right. If that's the only load you run with a certain Bushman trucking, like that's probably all, you know, that they run. Chances right. are ninety nine percent of the time that carrier is taking other loads from other brokers, and so the challenge the the challenge of that is like you don't really know that like it's you don't know which la loads or lanes or whatever it is that they're taking unless you call them and you profile it somewhere. But with C four, it already knows that as long as it, like they're booking loads with other brokers in the network, Bushman Trucking. Now all of a sudden that, that we picked up that they run Atlanta to Lakeland. Florida, now when you get Atlanta to Lakeland, that gives you the ability to use Bushman Trucking on that new lane that you've got now. So I didn't even know you could before. Yeah, exactly. And and it's it's just even with that, we've got a lot of customers that take these, take these options. And even if it's not like, you know, if I offered 900 and I've only got a, a thousand in the load and the carrier's like, I need 15, it's fourth of July, whatever kind of thing logistics throws at us but it, it's more like market insight too because when i was running a brokerage I, i'd always say like man we have no option zero options on this freight and we've had it on the board for three days like why don't we have any options did you call every single carry in our tms no you didn't there's no yeah. there's no way right nobody can no, nobody can do that and it's 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 just amazing to see that like even these options that come through at least you can take that back to your customer and service that that load and that customer even mm -hmm. if it's a it's a loss like you can at least take it back and say hey i've got 1500 uh to pick up today if you want it tomorrow it's going to be x price so it's it's a way to take 
take optionality to kind of the next level. Yeah. And then and again, I think making informed decisions is, the, I think, one of the other big parts of this, right? I mean, you guys is you what more your guys' integrations, right? We're laying the building blocks for that before you even get to this point, knowing what I should be paying, right? And and understanding what that looks like, understanding what my historic rates are and how those things compare, just so I have a reasonable expectation about um, what the rate might be before I even get it, right? Yeah. Um, it's going to help you make again more informed decisions and then hopefully save dollars, right? Those are that's kind of really the outcome there. So <laughs> I, I like that the building blocks to yeah. to great. Uh, I'm gonna let's see if I can take take this screen over. Oh yeah, let me stop sharing. I won't. They're being stingy over there. It's yeah. all good. <laughs> uh, so just kind of as we conclude here, just another comment on uh, DFM and automating that booking process. Revenue is is also something that deserves attention. I think most of our customers look at DFM as a way to to gain market share by that coverage expansion, like. Matt and I were just talking about, and it really gives them the ability to take more risk and take loads and volume rather than one load at a time because they know they, they have the coverage now. Uh, so getting freight on the books, worrying about margin later uh, will help kind of move you in a better position rather than spending hours trying to, to book a few loads uh, at a time with that might have higher margin, but at the same time, it takes a long time to do that. So if you're looking to book more freight, price competitively and Let's just call it gain market share, then then uh be here to talk. Uh I think I have a poll here. Let's see if I have one. Click launch. So if you'd like to learn more uh about the logistically and cargo chief integration, uh feel free to answer that poll. Um and uh we'll we'll be in touch. But if you're already a C4 customer, you can reach out to me uh or your CSM directly about integrating. Um, and we'll be in touch with that. So as you guys answer that poll, <laughs> excuse me, go ahead and open it up for Q and A. Um, and uh, as as questions come in, uh, we kind of typically get a lot of questions about uh, the integration setup and process. So I'm gonna just ask you, Matt, on your side, how long does the integration take to get set up, and what are the steps there? Yeah, like I mentioned, I think uh, it's really just a plug-in of some credentials and uh, sort of checking off which. Um, cargo chief products you really have uh, access to, right? Uh, obviously, I know you guys have a number of different subscriptions, but I really, I think that's just credentials driven. So it's really just a matter of plugging in, you know, uh, email, like a password, you know, your your uh, username, and password, and that's it. There you go. <laughs> right. Um, so very much no frills. That's sort of the goal for us. We all have stuff to, <laughs> stuff to do every day, right? So we don't want to yeah. kind of drag anyone through a long process to kind of get stuff like this set up. Yeah, and that that's really unique. I think with your TMS, so, some of the some other TMSs may, maybe a little bit larger or whatnot, but they you know they require kind of a whole dev team uh, to get things set up, and then it takes resources on on the the freight brokers end because it's right. because it, it it requires like customization and a lot of things that take a lot of time, and it, you're looking at 45, 60 days uh, to even start something right. and and then it's another like 60 days of of tweaking and fine tuning to 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 fit your freight and i i think you know logistically tms it, it has a lot of out of the box customizations that you can just select on your own uh and and with c4 it's you know the it's the beauty is like literally take your subscription take your credentials log them into logistically and boom you've got pricing in one place and capacity in one place. Right. The the digital freight matching piece to really like make it effective, making sure we're routing it to the right person, uh, making sure we're triggering on the right status, uh, your load status or whatever other criteria you've got. It might take a couple of weeks, but that's that's really about it. It's it's one or two calls with us, no, no resources on, doesn't require a dev team or IT team. Uh, it's pr pretty easy, pretty simple and start seeing the matches come through literally could be day day one if we were able to get get a call all together on that first day so it's it's pretty awesome and, and through the way we you know we look at thing like different ways to to kind of tweak the engine because frankly everybody books freight differently i i thought i you know i started my career at ch robinson and xpo and i thought i knew every way to book freight but there's there's thousands of ways that people are booking booking freight so it's you know, really about working through that. And the other part is um, another question we we usually get is like, what uh, like do I need to send any files or anything? And 
good thing with you guys is you guys take care of that. So like yeah. there's no files. Everything's yeah. instantaneously updated as you qualify, dequalify carriers. Uh, but also if there were any files, logistically does it all for you and they schedule reports to be sent. And it, it's it's just a really, really tight integration with very, very low, low uh, lifting on, on the user, which is helps product adoption. Um, right. So another question for you, Matt. Uh, I don't know personally if there are different versions of logistically, but is there a certain version that somebody needs to be on or could they literally have a C4 subscription and just put it in there today? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, no requirements for that. Um, I think that's another big sort of tenet of how we like to approach this stuff is, um, you know, we don't, we, we don't want to create barriers for people to, I mean, they're already paying a subscription for Cargo Chief, right? We want to enable them to, to, to get everything in one place. So no, no fees, no, uh, um, you know, subscription level or, or tier or anything like that to worry about. It's all uh, just plug and play with those credentials and then start seeing the value. Cool. Right on. All right. Well, that's kind of here at the conclusion. So uh, for those that, that are interested, we'll, we'll be in touch if you answer the poll and um, y'all have a good one and uh, be on the lookout for, for more things logistically and cargo chief. Take Thanks care. For having me, Chris. All right. Bye.